we had our first kid and I loved him the moment he was born. And I was like, I don't think I could ever love another human being this, this quickly in this instance. And then the second child was born and I loved her instantly and just as much. And I was like, you know what? We have way more love to give and that's really all the kids need is love. And so we talked about it since we were, you know, first married or, you know, that we wanted to adopt and wanted to share love with the orphans, the fatherless. That was what we felt like we were called to do. We didn't know where to go and adopt and this agency came and talked about what they did and we were like, okay, let's do this. We started that process of, you know, filling out the paperwork and getting our background checks. And one boy that they had suggested us or said, would, you know, would be a good fit. Uh, we started having visits and phone calls and things like that. You know, right before, I guess, school started one year, he moved here. And so we got to start school fresh here with us. So we had him, you know, for about a year and our adoption failed. I mean, he was the sweetest little boy, very creative. What ended up happening is we met with DHS and, and said that they were going to move him to a uh, therapeutic home. The next day DHS came and picked him up and it was sad. And Our kids still miss him and they still ask about him. When can we visit him and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and we, I miss him every day. I think about him all the time. But. I do too. And we talked to him several times and went and saw him several times and he was doing good too. He was yeah. doing very well in school. He was doing very well with his new home. And we just felt like he would find a better family that was a better fit for his needs. I had been volunteering with The Call. The Call is a nonprofit and they recruit, train, and support foster and adoptive parents. And they just go to all the local churches and they recruit families through the churches. I was what we call our church representative at our church. And one day, the county coordinator, she called me and she was gonna be promoted. And so she had to fill her position. And so she called me into the office. She said, we can't pay you very much and you're you know, only gonna get a few hours and the rest is kind of volunteer. But you know, go home and think about this and see if you wanna do this. And I said, I've been praying about this for a year. I don't need to think about it. But now, I mean, what Emily's doing, recruiting families, she didn't make a bigger impact with this job than she could have with us just having our home open. I mean, it, it felt like when this happened that that was the path that we were kind of led toward. You know, the trauma that is out there, that is real, that these kids go through, but also what the families go through, the foster families go through. And now she's able to, to go out and, and find families and, and empathize with them and, and still look for, you know, helping children and saving children and getting them placed in loving and caring homes. Um, and so our story, you know, maybe with that little boy doesn't end happily, but I can use that to encourage other people and to say, hey, here's the mistakes that I made. Don't make these mistakes. And for now, I get to help all the kids, the 600 and something kids in Fort Smith um, that need a home. So 